Glad you're with us today for the Retirement Income Show with Troy Sharp, the CEO and founder of Oak Harvest Financial Group. You can find out more about Troy and the team just by going to the website, oakharvestfinancialgroup.com. You can certainly search for Troy Sharp on YouTube. Over 100 videos that Troy and the team have put together for you about retirement, about financial stuff, about taxes, all kinds of information on the YouTube channel. Just search for Troy Sharp and Oak Harvest. There's no cost whatsoever to watch those. You can also subscribe, hit that bell thing that'll tell you when all the new ones come up as well. Troy and the team are always putting new stuff on YouTube. Just search for Troy Sharp and Oak Harvest. If you're old like me, I sometimes like to just talk to people instead of going to the internet. So I would call the team if you would like to do that. If you have any questions or concerns, it's 800 822 6434. 800 822 6434. 34. So we touched on Social Security and the taxes and all of that and how taxes are different from pensions and Social Security, Troy. But when we started the show, you said you want to talk about some of the retirement decisions that are upcoming for the new calendar year of 2022. What are some of the decisions we need to be thinking about? Well, not so much um, decisions for the upcoming year. Uh, but what I want you to understand is the power and value of the decisions you make. So when I talk about value and I talk about power, I'm always talking about it in the context of time. Money has a time value. So do your decisions in retirement. And this is why we require relationships with our clients because the goal is to compound good decisions year after year after year after year. And in doing so, you not only create power, but you create tremendous value. When I was thinking about this recently and how it came up, I had a client, you know, he said, Hey, Troy, you know, I love what you guys do. I love your services, but I've done this my entire life. I just can't stomach the fee. And I said, well, tell me more. And he says, well, you know, I mean, if we're going to pay you 1% to manage our assets, you know, that's X amount per year based on what I have. And, you know, I just, I just don't see it. I just don't feel it. I don't, I think it's way too much and, and I can do better myself. I said, well, okay, that may be true. And maybe we're not a good fit for one another. But how are you thinking about this 1%? And he brings up the investment stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking the market. I'm doing index funds. And, you know, you guys can't beat the market year after year after year. And I said, no, absolutely. You know, that's not the goal in retirement is to beat the market year after year after year. But, uh, but we had gone through our process. So at this point, we're three or four appointments in. And we had the foundation of the analysis in place. And we went through the tax analysis. There was well over a million dollars in savings that he could have. Um, on the investment side, what we had noticed was, I'm just going to throw some rough numbers out here to make the, the math easy for myself. Um, but he had roughly a million dollars in stocks during the coronavirus pandemic. So in April of that year, after the market crashed, he decided he wanted to reduce his allocation because emotionally he had saw it drop significantly. OK, and when you're retired or close to retirement, you start to understand that that light bulb moment hits. There's no more money coming in. I'm no longer saving. I am distributing. I have to protect my assets. So he went from, let's call it a 60 percent allocation to a 30 percent allocation in stocks. OK, so just to make the math simple and to drive home my point, if you have a million dollars in stocks, that's or excuse me. Yeah, if you have a million dollars in stocks, okay, and then you cut that allocation in half, now you're at about 500,000 in stocks, okay, from a 60% to a 30% allocation. I just want to drive the point home here. So I said, why'd you do that? He says, well, I was scared. You know, emotionally, I didn't know what to do. So what I did is I pointed him to our YouTube channel where I'm March 23rd and then a little bit later in March or April and then in June where we were telling people that everything that we see, Everything that we feel, the stock market is going to continue to climb much, much, much higher from this point. Try to be calm. Try not to make rash decisions and don't allow your emotions to impact your decisions because decisions in retirement are powerful. Well, this is how powerful they are. Just to give you an example, if he would have kept a, a million dollars in stocks, okay, from versus $500,000, 40%, let's say the market has gone up, the stock market has gone up since then. That $1 million, okay, would be worth about 1.4. That's a 40% increase. This is simple math. That 500,000, okay, would be worth 700,000. So the difference between if he had 
understood the value and the power of decisions. Okay, his 500, a 40% increase because he reduced his allocation. He was scared. He says, I'm going from a million to 500. Uncertainties abound. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm doing this myself. I'm going to reduce my allocation to protect myself. And that really is a move driven from fear, which I get it. We see it every single day. It's like going into the doctor's office and someone has a broken bone. You see it all the time. But what he's actually done is he's cost himself the difference between now he had 700,000, could have had 1.4 if he just had somebody there working with them. So that value is obvious, right? 700,000 to 1.4. He literally cost himself $700,000. Okay. When we're talking about our fee, okay, that would have paid our fee if he was working with someone, had a relationship with someone he trusted many, many, many decades over. But here's where the value and the power of decisions comes in. When I look at money and I look at retirement, I'm not looking at how much was paid or saved or made in any one year. I'm looking at the time value of that money, okay? So assuming that money stayed invested, that $700,000 difference in what he would or would not have, I'm looking at it over the next 20 years, okay? He really cost himself about $2.8 million over the next 20 years. How do I get to that number? Well, it's 7%. Your money's going to double about every 10 years. So by re allocating his portfolio out of fear, out of uncertainty. He didn't just cost himself where it could have been. He cost himself the time value of that money. So when we start talking about, do you have enough? Will you run out? How do you pay less tax? How are you going to pay for later in life care, health care, long-term care, assisted living, et cetera, et cetera. These are the types of decisions when we make good decisions year after year after year. We have a relationship. We're working together. You are connected to your plan so you know exactly how long your money, well, maybe not exactly how long it will last, but you have an idea of where you are. It is much easier to make better decisions year after year after year when you're working with someone who's helped thousands of people retire and stay retired. There's just a wealth of information available that is you can't put a price on it based on the experience, based on the relationship, based on the trust, based on... Um, understanding how your portfolio decision not only affects you today, but affects you over the next 10 to 20 years. Now you tie into that the tax plan that we were recommending. And the, then the income side of things. I'll talk a little bit more about the income plan in a minute. But my point, and I want to make it very, very clear. If you cost yourself $100,000, okay, in portfolio value because of a bad allocation decision, or you went out to stocks, you went to bonds, Whatever your decision is, whatever you've cost yourself, it's not just that finite value. You have to apply a time value to that money to get the true cost of that decision. So when we're talking about having a relationship with a financial advisor and paying a fee to have your assets managed, will you be better off in 20 years working with someone you trust who is operating in your best interest, who's not just helping with the investments, but also the taxes, the income planning, the estate plan, et cetera. Now, with that said, there's a lot of advisors out there. You will not be better off in 20 years. And that is just the truth. There are a lot of bad advisors in the industry. So that puts you, the consumer, in a difficult position. Who do you trust? Who do you work with? How can you trust them? What is their experience? What have they done for other people? And for many of you, that leads to paralysis by analysis. No decision is to be made because it's better to make no decision in a lot of people's minds than to make any decision or to make a bad decision. So I don't have answers for you. Um, I can only encourage you to understand the consequences of decisions in retirement. And when you choose a fine financial advisor, a retirement person to help you, you have to make sure you do your research, you have to do your diligence, and you have to, you, you have to trust your gut. You have to absolutely trust your gut because that oftentimes will not lead you awry or astray. When you go for sometimes the most charismatic or someone who, who was recommended to you by a friend without doing your due diligence, a lot of times you can get into trouble. Um, so I understand the position many of you are in. Do I do this myself? Do I go it alone? Do I hire this person? Do I hire that person? Which one do I like the most? You know, you pray on it. You, you trust in your instincts. 
Um, you do your research, you, you do the online reviews, you, you look online, you do all that stuff. Um, but ultimately, if you can find a good advisor, a good planner, they're going, they're going to have a relationship with them. They're going to help you make good decisions year after year after year after year. It's not just about beating the market. Okay. It's having less risk for a greater return relative to your needs and your goals and your objectives. So the Oak Harvest Retirement 360 process, that's where it starts. Your vision, your goals, your dreams, who are you, what do you want to happen? And then how do we build a portfolio allocation designed to reduce risk, but also give you the returns that you need to live comfortably. Then we get to the income plan. Step two, where are we taking the income from? One of the analyses that we did and we do for you as well when you come in is we look at where are we going to take our income from in retirement? So typically we're doing a blended distribution strategy where some of the money is coming out of your non-qualified accounts, which is your brokerage, your non IRAs, but we're also doing money out of the IRA, whether it's Roth conversions or we're just living on that IRA distribution. Because for many of you, if we don't touch that retirement account, if we leave it invested and let it defer, once you get to 72, 75, 78, 82, the forced distributions from that account are, can put you into very, very high tax brackets. But guess what? There is another domino effect there. Once your adjusted or modified adjusted gross income crosses over certain thresholds, you're not only paying income taxes, you're paying possibly net investment income tax, but you're also paying possibly IRMA tax, which is a tax on your Medicare premiums. So you have six different thresholds of IRMA taxes, depending on what your income is. Many of you have been told your entire life that you're going to be in a lot lower tax bracket in retirement. The truth is, if you saved money inside a retirement account, when you extrapolate out and you look at the compound growth of those accounts, and if you don't touch them, many of you will have large distributions in that 150, 200, 250 range as you go through retirement. Now you add Social Security, you add dividends and interest, you add, re add rental income. You could easily have three, 350 of income, maybe more in retirement. So just understand the power of these decisions is not just how much you make today or save today. You have to then look at the time value of that money. If you reduce your allocation or if you have the wrong allocation because you don't know how much growth you need to achieve your goals over a 30 year period or your needs, okay, that money that you've cost yourself, especially when we're in a large bull market like we are now, it translates for many of you into hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. 1-800-822-6434. If you'd like to have a conversation, reach out, give us a call. You leave us a message. Okay. So if you're listening to this on the weekend, we don't have anyone working on the weekend. Frank, who's been with me for over 10 years, he's going to get that message. He's going to call you back on Monday and simply see if you're a good fit for Oak Harvest. Um, also get to know who you are and what's important to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, the, uh, you can give us a call. If it's business hour, someone, someone will answer and, and we'll go through that process of seeing if we're a good fit for each other and schedule a, a, a consultation. Um, this is my promise to you. Okay. No one here will ever pressure you to do anything. Okay. We do not pressure anyone to do anything. We want to help you if you're a good fit for who we are and if we're a good fit for who you are. It's a very simple process. We created this firm based on the simple idea that if Oak Harvest existed when my grandparents retired, who are both gone now, but went through a very bad experience, both through my health condition, but also from a financial experience, they could have walked in, sat across from an advisor that they unequivocally trusted that would always operate in their best interest and put together a full plan that looked at not just the investments, okay, but looked at how do we get income? How much income can we take? I believe in a dynamic income plan, by the way, but how do we reduce taxes and how do we blend all that together? So the phone number is 1-800-822-6434. Go to YouTube. If you're listening to this on the radio at home, check out the videos, tons of financial planning videos out there. I want you to get a feel for who we are, the type of planning that we do to see if we're a good fit for you. And if so, give us a call. We'll see if you're a good fit for us. And from there, we can have a conversation and see if we're, we're, we do work well with one another and go from there. Uh, but you have to pick up the phone. You have to give us a call. And that starts by dialing 1-800-822-6434.
So we're headed to our final segment with Troy Sharp, the CEO and founder of Oak Harvest Financial Group. Again, the website's oakharvestfinancialgroup.com. We've got more to get to and one more segment to get it all done. Troy's back in one minute. Stay with us. <music> 